Hi everyone, I'm Ryozo Tsujimoto from Capcom. We wanted to share more information about Iceborne through another developer diary. That's why I've decided to invite our two directors to join me. Go ahead, guys. Hi everyone, I'm Kaname Fujioka, art director and executive director on Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Thank you for having me. And also... I'm Daisuke Ichihara, director on Iceborne. Thanks for having me as well. The pleasure is all mine. Now then, let's dive into all the latest updates. But I have to say, hitting up the hot springs is really something. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could say that. Iceborne features a new snowy locale, so we felt it necessary to add areas of warmth as well. Which is why we wanted to add hot springs into the game itself, and why we're in one right now. Tsujimoto-san really wanted to make this presentation happen. Right, so here we are. That's right. Right. We'll be showing more game footage during our presentation, which will help you understand why we're all relaxing in a hot spring right now. So without further ado, let's kick things off first with the latest trailer. Enjoy. Now that you've taken a look at the latest trailer, we wanted to take this opportunity and delve deeper into the various things that were just shown. And who better to talk about these features than these two right here? First off, we've announced the new headquarters, Celiana. I believe you also caught a glimpse of our new gathering hub. Let's touch on that a bit more. Well, first we have the hot springs you see here. Horfrost Reach, as the name suggests, is quite cold, so we wanted to juxtapose the cold with a home base that provides a sense of warmth. And what better way to warm up than to dive into the hot springs together? That's why we centered the gathering hub around one. So what we see here is very much in the heart of the gathering hub. Exactly. Think of it like the main attraction. Are people going to jump into the hot springs with all their gear on? Great question. You can take a breather with your gear on. But with the click of a button, you can also swap into something more comfortable. We figured it'd be a great way of helping players immerse themselves into the hot springs. So it's up to what the players want. 
We also prepared specific gestures to take the experience to the next level, such as falling into the water. Players can also splash water at one another, so we really set it out to be a relaxing and interactive environment. You can also enjoy a meal there. Is this a sauna? Indeed. The ultimate test of endurance, so to speak. <laughs> you can really tell things are heating up. And that the Palicos aren't able to keep up. <laughs> Everyone's ready to keel over. This is a bit of nice detail, but we also added foot baths too, so you can just warm up your feet if you feel like it. It allows you to interact with your Palico in a playful fashion. So these are some of the more subtle actions you're able to take. Precisely. Dip your feet into the hot water and your Palico will follow suit. It's all very cute. The Palicos are kind of big. <laughs> Surprisingly big. We put some additional work into the gathering hub. We know a lot of fans wanted us to improve accessibility of things between quests to make everything easier to access and improve the game cycle. So we focused on making things more fluid. It's an area where we wanted people to interact more. We wanted a means of really bringing the community closer together than ever before. There's still some transitional periods, but we wanted to lower the number of loading times. You can now access the smithy directly from the gathering hub, for example. And you can also manage your layered gear from the smithy as well. So in general, you wanted to build a gathering hub that had high usability for a much tighter experience. You're absolutely right. Whether it's the resource center or the botanical research facility, the hub now has all the facilities necessary in preparing for hunts. For the squads, this time around we've prepared something called the squad card. It's something that the squad leader is able to create. They can include information about the squad in the card and send invites to others. People who receive the invite can accept it afterwards without having to be in the same online session. It allows people to check out various squads and gives them time to decide which squad is best for them. By casually sending out squad cards in the same fashion as guild cards, people can still have a means of staying in touch, which I think will improve how people interact with each other in the game. We also included sub-leaders as well. Squads now can have sub-leaders, who are also able to send squad card invites out, as well as accept requests. That's quite a hefty responsibility. <laughs> The sub-leader is also able to edit the squad emblem as well. We've made various quality of life improvements like this. Every aspect has really been thought out. Up until now, there were two difficulty settings. There was a difficulty for single player and a difficulty for multiplayer, no matter how many people were playing. This time around, we've added another difficulty for those who are co-oping a quest with a party of two people. It adds an extra layer of scalability. Yeah, we're now looking at three levels of difficulty. For example, I'm sure some people have encountered a party member dropping out for whatever reason, or you were playing with a friend who suddenly got disconnected and it went down to just you. Now the difficulty will scale back down. I see, so it scales based on the situation. Yes, the difficulty setting is now flexible and will adapt to the given situation for a more optimal experience. So the multiplayer experience should be smoother than ever before. By adding a two-player difficulty setting, we're expecting more people to feel comfortable playing co-op. With more two-player co-op and higher frequency of seeing Palicos in battle, can we assume they've also been improved? They've undergone changes as well. Players will see new Palico gadgets. Yes, you can now summon a Shield Spire Stooge. It's a decoy that pops out. They help to draw attention away from the player. With those looks, it's not surprising. Then there's the Meow Kano, a jar-like cannon that shoots firebombs everywhere. There's also the Vigor Wasp. It now has an added ability to revive players immediately back into battle if they faint. Additionally, there are improved high-ranked versions of the Plunder and Trap Gadgets, which I think players are going to enjoy utilizing on hunts. When Iceborne launches, there will be Monster Hunter World players who have Iceborne and those who don't. 
But don't worry, we've implemented a system that allows both player groups to play with one another. So I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about that aspect. People who haven't bought Iceborne won't be able to join Iceborne quests. However, Iceborne players can still join up in low to high rank quests set up by Monster Hunter World players. For example, let's say I purchased Iceborne and Ichihara-san still only has Monster Hunter World. I can still help him out in his quests? Yep, that's correct. For those who purchase Iceborne but haven't completed Monster Hunter World, will they be able to use Iceborne game mechanics in the base game? They can. Those elements are not tied to the Iceborne section of the game and can be enjoyed immediately. We're also offering a Master Edition to newcomers to Monster Hunter World, allowing you to enjoy all the new Iceborne mechanics from the start. That's right, even during low rank quests. We're hoping players get to experience the game the way they see fit. Let's continue to go into greater detail about Celiana and dive into the changes made in your room. You're now free to change up the furniture and wallpaper in your room in Celiana to give that extra feel of customization and personalization. You unfortunately can't change up the placement of the furniture, but you're able to swap out the type, as well as customize the color, design, and material of the furniture so that you can design a room to your taste. We're eager to see what kind of rooms the players will come up with. We really wanted to give players that added level of customization. So they're coming back to a unique room like no other. How do you obtain new furniture? You're able to obtain some from completing quests and deliveries. And we also plan on including more furniture in future updates as well. There's also some extra decor in the deluxe kit as well, which we had announced pretty early on. I'm sure there were a lot of fans who were wondering what that was all about. We couldn't talk about details back then. That's right. You can change the entire theme of your room. And while your room is basically made entirely out of wood, such as the pillars, with the deluxe kit, you're able to change it up to stone, which gives a more classic medieval feel to it. When you step out of your room, you can see the outside of it also changes as well. With so much personalization, it makes you want to invite people over to check it out. Totally agree. That feature unfortunately won't be available until post-launch, but we already have plans to implement a feature to allow other people to check out your room. So please stay tuned. Now, let's talk about a new feature called View Mode. We've added a new feature called View Mode to the Start menu. You can move the camera around pretty freely, so you can take screenshots of the game from angles you were unable to access previously. We're hoping it'll be a great feature for those who like taking snapshots of cool moments or scenery. Not to mention you're able to change your pose. That's right. All the gestures so far focused more on movement, such as dances. But we also included more gestures designed for anyone wanting to pose for the camera. We figured people can have fun posing with their friends and coming up with some creative group shots. Your palico can also pose for the camera and have the same gesture as the player. So people can really have very elaborate shots with each other. How do people actually take screenshots? The screenshots themselves would be taken through the hardware's system functions. We figured it'd be a good way to lean on the hardware. So we're looking forward to seeing people utilize it and come up with a lot of memorable shots. Let's now talk about the monsters that appeared in the new trailer. Take it away. We have the Fulgur Anjaneth. In Monster Hunter, they're a subspecies of the normal species that you start encountering at higher ranks. 
They add a variation to the monsters you're used to fighting, which adds an extra level of gameplay and challenge. It's very much a twist on what you know. For those who have played through Monster Hunter World, you may have encountered some subspecies already, such as Azure Rathalos, Pink Rathian, and Black Diablos when you reached high rank, and they put different spins on the fights. We wanted to add more of these types of monsters in Iceborne as well. So that's why you have this new subspecies of Anjanath here. Anjanath has an affinity towards fire, but this subspecies of Anjanath has an affinity towards lightning. However, rather than using lightning directly as a weapon, it uses its lightning as a means to charge its body and strengthen its physical attacks. By storing electricity, it can begin to utilize it. And then, for example, its bite attack will be covered in electricity. At its peak, it really starts to act even more violently. So it's all about the player finding a means of reducing its charge. That'll be the key to victory against it. Now let's move on to the second monster, shall we? This is Ebony Odegarone. The regular species locates and devours chunks of meat to feast on, which makes it a little bit stronger. But with the subspecies, we wanted to embellish this attribute further. It frequently carries its prey in its mouth and eats it when hungry. Think of it as being in a constantly powered up state. It also has an affinity towards the dragon element. If a player is hit, they'll lose the elemental power on their weapon. So it becomes even more important to pay attention to Ebony Odegaron's movements. The original version was prone to attacking with deadly precision but the subspecies has added attacks with a wider range, so it'll really change up how you decide to approach the fight. This'll be the last monster we talk about today. Glavinus, who captivated the players in Monster Hunter Generations, makes its grand return. It has a unique red and blue appearance, with its tail undoubtedly being its most distinguishable feature. That's right. Its tail is shaped like a great sword, which it wields as a means of hunting its prey. Similar to its previous appearance, we kept elements of its tail heating up or going blunt, and of course adding additional actions fitting of Monster Hunter World. So we hope you'll have a fun time with this monster. Fundamentally, its basic attacks revolve around it heating up its tail and swinging it around for some devastating hits and it'll also build up fire too. It can also use the heat stored up in its throat to fire attacks at the player. That fire itself also has some features not seen in Monster Hunter Generations. It was a delicate balance of keeping certain elements intact while adding that extra spin that we're giving to all the monsters returning for this iteration. That's all we have for you today in terms of the monsters, but there's still plenty more monsters to talk about. So please stay tuned as we continue to roll out more information for you. I just wanted to take this opportunity to summarize our product lineup. Monster Hunter World Iceborne will have a global release on PS4 and Xbox One this year on September 6th. The PC version will be coming this winter. If you already have Monster Hunter World, you can pre-order the Iceborne expansion now and immediately jump into new gameplay at launch. For those who haven't played Monster Hunter World, we recommend checking out the Master Edition, which includes both the base game and the Iceborne expansion. You can pre-order it online or at your local retail store. We also have the Digital Deluxe version that includes the Deluxe Kit. This contains additional layered armor, the aforementioned room decor, as well as stickers and gestures. This is also available for pre-order now. If you purchase any of these products before the launch of the game or just after release, you'll also get the Yukumo layered armor set as an incentive. That's all we have for you today, and we hope you enjoyed what you saw. We'll have more updates for you in August. So, we'll see you then. Well then, let's end things with our usual call out. Ready? 
Happy hunting! <laughs>